Hi, and welcome to the eighth video in our C Sharp for Beginners tutorial series. In the last video, we took a look at user input and saw the different errors that can actually come up with taking in user input, especially when we're expecting numbers. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the try catch finally blocks. Uh, so that is going to be our error handling in C Sharp. So we're going to be taking a look at how to implement that and some examples of where else we could use it. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started. So what we're going to want to do is we're just going to want to set up our environment here just so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. So I'm just going to set up a console.read key underneath here. And the first thing we're going to do is console dot uh, write line and we're just going to write enter uh, please enter the first uh, number. All right, so we are prompting the user for a number and then we're just going to do a string and we're going to call this input num1 and we're going to set this equal to console.readline colon uh, semicolon and what we're going to do here is we're going to do a int uh, num1 equals int dot parse input input num1 and we're going to do that so if we actually go ahead and try to run this code we've kind of already seen what happens so if we run this here and we put in a number three everything's going to work correctly no errors happen if we go ahead and put in q we do get an error and we get an unhandled exception string dot format exception input string was not in a correct format. So let's actually go ahead and let's fix this to make this a little bit nicer for the user. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put a try open and close curly bracket and then we're going to do a catch open parentheses exception close parentheses open and close curly brackets. All right and in our try statement is where we are going to copy our int parse and then in that catch we are just going to go ahead and put console dot right line um there was an error please enter a valid number all right so we have our try we have our catch here let's go ahead and let's run this so if we now see, we can enter a good number, nothing really happens, it's everything as it should be. And then we can go ahead and we can do a Q here. And now we get, there was an error, please enter a valid number. Now, of course, we haven't seen loops, so we can't go back and reprompt the user for the correct number, but it doesn't shoot out an ugly error message and says that it wasn't unhandled. Now with the catch um, in the parentheses here, we just have exception. But as we saw, we actually know what kind of exception it was, a format exception. So we can actually specify the type of exception here. Um, and we can do here a little bit uh, format exception. Please enter a valid number. All right, so if we actually go ahead and we launch this here and we put in a queue, we're going to see that we get format exception, please enter a valid number. But by specifying this format exception, what we actually do as well is since we know that integers only support a certain value here, if I just put a bunch of ones, we know that this is this number is too big for an integer. And we actually get another unhandled exception. So we get an unhandled exception, overflow exception. Value was either too large or too small. So this is where we can do another catch statement. And we're just going to actually do just an exception here. We're not going to do the other overflow exception. And we're going to do a console.write line. And we're just going to do um, the error has occurred 
and we're just going to run this again and we are going to put a whole bunch of ones we get error has occurred if we run it and put an a we get the format exception so what i would do here is i would actually put this overflow exception here and then put another one called overflow exception and then number was either two uh, too small or too big for integer. And then what I would do here is because we know now that it will only catch these two exceptions. If for some reason the user puts something else in here and it triggers another exception, we won't be able to handle that. So what I would do here is I would put another catch exception, open and close curly brackets, and just do a console.writeLine unknown error has occurred and this way we actually catch the exception we could display it to the user that this is an error that we we haven't really tested for we don't know what it is um, and we can even add like please contact help at help.ca or something uh, you would put your email here so they can send you help and maybe tell you what they did to get that error so then you can actually test your software and maybe add that exception so if someone else in the future has that error they could get a nicer error message now as i mentioned at the beginning of the video this would be a try catch finally statement so there is actually one last block to this try catch and that is the finally block so this finally block is just triggered by the finally open and close curly brackets. And this, we will do a console.writeLine. And in that right line here, we will say that this line always executes. This line always executes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do another console.writeLine outside of the try catch. And we are just going to say, um, Num uh, actually, we're going to do a interpolated string. Uh, number squared is going to be, we're just going to do num1 times num1. Times, oh, well, actually, what we can do, it's going to be in that try block, so we're actually not... We're just going to do a console dot right line here after the after the int num one int parse. We're just going to do an int right line. We're just going to do uh, number squared. It's going to be uh, num one times num one because we haven't seen the math library yet. Uh, so we're just going to do num1 times num1, which is going to be squared, and this line always executes. And then we can just say console dot right line end of program. Perfect. So if we actually run this here, it's going to say please enter a number. So let's put in a valid number first. So we're just going to put three. We get number squared is nine. This line always executes, end of program. We can run this again and let's enter an invalid number here. So let's enter a Q here first. And we can see format exception, please enter a valid number. This line always exec executes and then end of program. And if we do once again, just enter a bunch of ones here. We get overflow exception number was either too small or too big for integer this line always executes end of program so as we can see that error handling really only affects what is inside of that try statement whatever comes after the try statement will actually still executes as well but this finally block will always execute so the reason why we want to use that finally code block is going to be in cases where we are opening uh, database connections, internet connections, uh, files. Uh, so if we're opening files to write to them or read to them, we would want to always do that in a try statement. 
And then if for some reason it something fails in that uh, writing or reading of the file, uh, we catch that exception, we display it to the user, but then in that finally block, we would be able to close that connection to the database or the file. This way that connection does not stay open. Uh, it doesn't use up unnecessary memory or cause uh, unwanted vulnerabilities in your program. So that is where that finally code block really comes in handy is really just to clean up whatever code that you have in the try statement that might be lingering still um, if an error has occurred. So that is pretty much error handling um, in a nutshell for C Sharp. Very, very similar to the try catch finally statements in PowerShell. If you have uh, knowledge of those, these should come pretty, pretty straightforward uh, with the catch exceptions. You can always catch those specific errors, output a message for those errors, uh, and then we have that finally code block. So that's pretty much it. In the next videos, we are going to be seeing if statements and switches. Uh, so we're going to be able to make different decisions based on some conditional parameters. So make sure to stay tuned for that as well. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know down below in the comment section. If you guys have a question or a topic that you guys would like to see a video on, let me know down there as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and that like button and make sure you hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.